what up everybody this is mitch Darrell, and before we get into the video okay just hear me out i got three huge favors to ask okay three typical youtube favors okay so one can you hit the like button okay the like button just that just that little thumbs up you can just you can just click that real quick we'd appreciate that second thing can you hit the subscribe button okay i know i know it's a lot to ask i know you subscribe you know you're really really stingy with who you subscribe to but i, I promise you will not regret it if you could subscribe to us and the third thing, if you could hit the bell, just so you'll be notified anytime we post anything, okay? So those three favors, I, you know, I'll be forever indebted to you. I appreciate it, okay? And while you're at it, if you could go ahead and go and check out my guys at tbk247.com as we change the culture for God. Peace. Not gonna lie, so when I was younger, I would say like, you know how we have to all go through this identity crisis type thing when we're younger? That's good. Like, yeah, kind of. Like, you you don't want to be like... The friends, any friends. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so can do wonders like AI anomalies. Or I know that, right? Saga, who was on, rap on, on the beats. You're definitely more lyrical, so like you're not- I actually knew a guy in Miami that he was going to the same gym. And I tweeted like last week that someday I'm gonna have a song with him. I don't know how it's gonna happen, but it's gonna happen. Um, so. <laughs> Yo, what up everybody? This is Mr. Rowe and this is the Mr. Rowe Show and it is episode 28, I believe. And it's been a minute since I've done one of these. I've been kind of slacking, but I need to get back on track doing them regularly. So I decided to get back into the groove of things. I'm going to have somebody that I've had on here before where my setup wasn't as great. And someone I'm close to, my friend and collaborator and a lot of other things, uh, Alcott. What's up, man? What up? Thanks for having me. Of course, man. Thanks for being on the show. I don't even remember all the stuff we spoke about on the first episode. So I'm sure we'll end up re-covering some either. stuff. But it's funny because, like, I – people talk about how you can't really make friends or get close to people over the internet. I met you once in person, I think, like a year ago at the yeah, Rapzilla yeah. event. Mm -hmm. But even before that, I would have cons – I consider you a friend now. But even before then, I was like, oh, yeah, okay. I feel like I know you. We've talked about stuff outside of music. Um, so meeting you in person, it's kind of like, yo, what's up, man? Like, I've met you a million times, like – what are your thoughts on kind of this space and having friends um, that you might not ever meet in person? Uh, I mean, I think the concept of internet friends in general is weird. Um, <laughs> it's, I feel like the first like exposure to that I had was like making friends over like PlayStation, like in like yeah. Call of Duty lobbies and stuff. Like, right. and, like you have kind of make friends with people, but then you ultimately, like, you never meet up with those people. Right. And I feel like a lot of times it just sort of fizzles out. Um, That's true. But it, it is a little different, like in when you're doing music and you're like actually like collaborate with people on stuff. Then like there's, I guess there's more reason to sort of keep in touch. Um, right. I mean, I would still say like I, I would say I have a, just a lot of like acquaintances, like mm -hmm. in terms yeah. of like people who I would actually say like are my friends. Um, it's you know I can count on one hand probably. Yeah, I feel you. Cause that, so that was going to be the word I was going to use is like, there's people that you associate with every day online, but like, would you, I think a good, uh, maybe measure is, would you invite them to your wedding? Or if the thought of that makes you like roll over laughing, it's like, okay, they're probably not. <laughs> probably yeah. <laughs> friends that are like, wait, you thought you were coming at, no, 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 no. Um, <laughs> yeah. us I mean, it, maybe there's like an in-between point between wedding maybe wedding like your and... birthday so your birthday party <laughs> i can rock with that if you're in the town yeah. you might get stay in my place you know yeah, you yeah. <laughs> park in my place that's funny but i'm um, definitely invited to your wedding right if i ever have one yeah <laughs> yeah all right cool <laughs> i'll invite all of the uh the group chat so speaking of the group chat we are in, we are in a group chat together called tls uh stands for the listening session and I think it's been like, I think we're going on like two years of being this group of like 30 to 40 of us that kind of collab, talk about randomness. What are your thoughts about just the group chat in general? And do you feel like you've gained anything from it? You Are you glad you're in it? Uh, Yeah, I mean, first of all, it's crazy that it's been like two <laughs> years. Is that is that I accurate? Know. I, I'm almost, I know it's been more than a year. I'm pretty sure it's okay. been like two years. That's wild, cause yeah, no, I mean that's that's flown by. Um, yeah. 
but yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm glad I'm in it. Like I, I would say that at least for me, the, the title, the listing session is not like, I don't really like, take advantage of it in that way often. Like I feel like I rarely Either. send music in there. Yep, I don't right. really use it as a feedback thing. And I, I mean, I'll still, I'll listen to other people's stuff and give feedback sometimes, but sometimes I'm bad at that even. Yeah, but, uh, but just as like a, like a group of, of guys who just like, you know, love a lot of the same stuff and just like sort of talking and joking around. Like, I mean, it's a, it's a blast. I mean, I'm, I it's a great community for sure. I'm and good to have like, everybody, kinda, you know, supporting. Facts. It actually, it makes you feel less, I was saying this to somebody, it makes you feel less alone in this space because it's like, it's very easy to be like, I want to be a Christian hip hop. And then you're just like, maybe on Twitter or something and you see other artists, but like, you don't have anyone to work with musically or bounce ideas off of. So being in like a centralized location, it's like, I pretty much, I'd be fine if I'm in this chat for another five or six, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, I can always visit it when I want to. I can mute it if I want to. I think you keep it muted, right? No, but I'll, I'll like mute it for like a few hours at a time sometimes, That's especially when like, when it's, it, when it's really like, lit in there like yeah I, i'll have to like get something done because i'll just get distracted and and talk on there for hours right no i'll use that mute for eight hours button a lot i'm like i'll, I'll see y'all tomorrow um so we, so speaking of we have the tls uh volume one i guess it's i don't know if it's a mixtape or an album i don't know what we're calling it but that's coming out soon i think early next year if truth isn't lying to me um, so there's like, a, I'm not going to say the number of songs. There's a lot of songs and there's a lot of artists on there. And you and I just dropped a song called Run Away that came out last Friday or whenever this comes out. It came out on the 11th, I think. Um, and so Something that like I've been keeping track. This is like either the sixth or seventh song that we have that's either you, me, it's either you're featured on one of my songs or we're on a song of another artist together and there's another i think there's at least one or two other times that we're both on the same project of somebody else's even if it's not we're on the same song you yeah think that's yeah. a coincidence or you think what do you think that's about <laughs> that's a good question I, I didn't think about that um <laughs> i mean probably probably mostly coincidence but I, I don't know i mean i think that uh i mean obviously you and me like working together on like something that like we make is that, right that's something different but uh i mean i would guess that we have like similar like crossover in terms of like people who listen to us and like mm. artists who like our our stuff so like right i guess it makes sense for us to get put on similar things and i mean we probably interact with each with each other enough on twitter that people just like That's associate true. us together. together so well what's funny about that and we've talked about this before because we have a we you have a lot in common with me like we when we've just talked i've been like you did we grow up in like the we have the same childhood in some way, like the same yeah. high school experiences. But what's funny is like musically, we are pretty far from each other when it comes to the stuff we make, especially me recently. Like maybe when I first met you, you know, I was rapping fast more often, but even aside from that, I was using more hip hoppy type beats. Like my project Darrell was much more traditional hip hop production. And then after that is when yeah. I went to rap should be fun. So now it's like, we are, so very different sounding but i feel like people group us together for a couple reasons one because we talk a lot on socials two because back before i was retired from rap contests we were always the ones doing all the rap contests it's true so it was, yeah i didn't think about that one of us winning or us both placing so i feel like people were like oh well those guys do all the contests and do well so i think legacy has both of us on a on a project i think there's another one but i know we both connected with KJ52 and we're both on we're both on different projects of his and then we have a song that we're on together on the, which I yeah. think is the third one um so I think I know this story but remind me how did you get connected with KJ uh yeah that was that that was a contest uh which mm -hmm. I think that's how you connected with him too right yeah uh so he, yeah so it was for his uh his victory lap album right he, like did just like a open verse thing where it's like if you uh you know uh, best verse gets on the album or whatever mm -hmm. and there were like three beats to pick from 
and I, I just remember that. I spit a verse, I spit a verse on one of them, and I ended up winning that, and I got I got on that album. And the funny thing was that the song was called My Very Last Song because originally yeah. it was supposed to be his last album, and it's the last yep. song on the album. I remember being like, "Yo, this is sick! I'm on KJ's last <laughs> song ever." <laughs> and then of course, like he put out another album in like a year, but um, but yeah, so that's like of how I initially got connected with him and you know I've stayed in touch with him to some extent which is which is nice he's he's a great guy you know that's equal to that's equal to the guy that got uh Brady's last touchdown pass and then he was gonna keep yeah. it and sell it later and then they were like oh he's back that is not worth it anything. exactly yeah <laughs> same thing that's super funny um so yeah so I he did the what happened was project with poetics which I thought was dope because I was like Oh, it's like a OG working with Poetics was even obviously younger at the time and not a household name, I guess, as he has now. She had a couple songs with Zay Hill. Everything was produced by Poetics. And I had done a couple of smaller contests. And I remember KJ being like, yo, like whoever wins will be on the on the project. But it was one of those things where you didn't have to like post it on socials. You just had to email it. Um, so I had no idea like how many people had entered. So I remember I did my verse and I remember this is when I used to record at a, at a studio and I had to pay for it. So I was like willing to spend my money to oh, do yeah. this verse. And I felt like I wrote the best verse of my, I was so happy. I was like, this verse is amazing. I cannot remember the name it was go for it was the name of the song. And I remember being like, this verse is great. I was playing it for my, my friends in the car being like, this is, this is the best verse I've ever written. There's I, even if I lose, I know I did my best. So then I remember they went live. He went live with Poetics. And they were like, we're going to announce the winner. And then they were like, we're going to actually announce the winners. Because we had a tie. And I was like, what? And so that made me happy, but scared. Because I'm like, oh, like, if I don't win, I really suck. Because that means two people yeah. did better than yeah. me. <laughs> so the first person, I don't know if I got announced first or second. I think I was first. It's a, be it's a better story if you were not second, though. So let's yeah, just say I, that. I, yeah. I genuinely can't remember, but I think I might've been, I think I was first and they said, Mr. O. And I was like, jump, I would live my granddad at the time. Um, and I, I lived above the, his second garage. And I was like, jumping on the bed. I was like, I am so excited. Like, this is great. And then the second one was uh, Jody Jermaine. I don't know if you are aware of him. Um, yeah, I got a, I got a song with him that would never I, drop. But... Really? Oh man, I love it. Yeah, we did a song together a while ago. They played both verses on the live and I thought it was so dope. And then I heard Jody's and I was like, how how was this a tie? He his verse was better though. Like I really to this day I feel like his verse was better. But KJ was like, oh, I asked different friends of mine and people who are close to me. I asked people who don't even know music that well, and everybody had a different answer. So we just picked both of y'all. But I was like, I, I I don't care if it's a tie or what. Um, and then later I think you got to do this too. I got to perform with him the song that I had with him at a, a show in Myrtle Beach, which is two hours from me. Um, and you did you get to perform? With him well yeah it wasn't it so i didn't perform the the contest verse though he had like he hit me um you know like a few months after i won that contest and said like hey you know i have this show that's like i think it was like three hours away from me um and he's like you know can you come and like perform the verse um and i had um i had something the next day uh, I think it might have been like a session with like Ray Rock or something. And so like mm -hmm. I couldn't I couldn't like do both. And so I was just like, ah, like I, I can't make it. Uh, um, right. And so but then I got the opportunity to perform with him at Flavor Fest last year. Okay. He, he had a set and I just was I happened to also be there. Um, and so he was just like, yo, let me just pull you up on stage. And so we did the the nothing you can't do song, the one that you and I are both on. Yeah. Oh, man, I wish I could have been. <laughs> that would have been so dope. Yeah, that would have been crazy. <laughs> So for me, I'm trying to think. So I remember, shout out to, KJ is actually the reason that we even know each other, at least that we met each other when we did, because I entered that second contest kind of just for fun. I was like, I, he's not going to pick me twice. Um, and I picked one of the weirder beats because I remember Poetics was like, you picked that beat? I was like, I liked it. I thought my verse was okay, but I was like, I'm not going to win this. And then I don't even think I checked back to see who won. And then KJ was like, yo, you should... um." I think I know I listened to the project and I heard the last song and was like, this guy is really good. And I think I asked KJ about it. He was like, oh yeah, you should like connect with him. Like he's, he had a really dope verse. Um, and I think I just reached out to you and was like, yo, KJ said, I should hit you up. And then 
the rest is history. Um, but I remember thinking like, I think part of me was still disappointed that I didn't win because I guess I was greedy. Like I didn't need to be on 2KJ. Well, I guess I am on 2KJ <laughs> projects. Um, was that was that the first rap con like CHH rap contest you had won? Uh, may maybe I, I, I actually I don't remember. remember. I, don't, I don't think it was. I don't know if it was the first rap contest I ever won. Period. But mm. I think it probably was the first CHH one. Wow, what a high! You can't even. It's gonna be pretty hard. To all, it also might have been the first CHH contest I ever did. To be honest, really? I'm, wow. I think I wasn't really aware that there were a lot of CHH contests at all, like before then. So like yeah, I just I didn't sense. even know that there were contests to be entered. Yeah, no, I feel that. I think once you did, you got kind of hooked. Cause like so for me, I had won a couple of small ones before that, like maybe two that were like really small. Whenever they said yo you won this you tied you won the kj one you tied with jody they said 75 people entered i was like oh i'm like good at it like i'm okay because like people ask like have you always been as good as you are now at rapping and obviously the answer is no for everybody for the most part unless you're bats um but when i started i was way less punchliney. i couldn't really figure out i used to be a drummer so i was good with cadences but i hadn't found like my own and what worked well for me so i wasn't really good it was kind of more like word babble stuff that didn't make a lot of sense but i was saying words that kind of rhymed so then i feel like around the kj um uh contest is when i got a little better at like actually structuring verses and that gave me a ton of con uh ton of confidence to be like i could if i won this kj one i'm gonna enter every other contest i ever see and i won like five or six and then we talked about this getting mad when you don't win and they're like, is this healthy? Should I, should I seek yeah, help? Yeah, oh yeah. You there are plenty of times where I wanted to quit rapping <laughs> when I would when I would lose a contest. Well, that was one Especially of the things that actually on. led me to do the rap should be fun thing because it was like, I would get so, I don't even know, I don't know if it's mad. I'd just be so disappointed or kind of like down on myself, especially if I thought I should have won it. And I'd be like, is this even worth it? Like people even value what it is I do. Should I just put auto tune on my verse? And eventually I was like, I need to really focus on having fun doing it. You know, I can use the verse for something later. I can post it. It doesn't matter if I win or not. I don't need this prize or whatever it is. It's never something like life changing. Um, but yeah, I think I like that you started doing them because it just gave me like a, kind of like the put the battery in your back sort of thing and like let me see if i can if i can win this one if alcott's doing it <laughs> <laughs> yeah hey rap should be competitive as i always say <laughs> is it um let's see so yeah we definitely we got the kj thing in common and then that's how we met um there was a question i had for you so you got you would, would you consider ruslan like a, a mentor of yours and kind of like somebody that's helped you a lot in Christian hip hop and rap in general. For sure. Yeah. No, I mean that it, Ruslan was, I think before, before the KJ contest, you know, Ruslan would have like his show where he like reviews music. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I can't remember how I found out about that, but I had, I had the song with Ishan was like the first song I ever made. And right. I had no so like sort of <laughs> frame of reference as to like, I hadn't showed it to anybody. And then I found out that Ruslan had this show and I was like, well, I mean, this seems like the perfect opportunity to find out, like, is this even any good? And so right. I sent that song into his show. I think it was him and, and Dayton was there as a guest. Wow. Um, <laughs> and so they listened to the song, like I watched them react to it and both of them were like very impressed and both really liked it. And so that was one of the first, like, I guess, confirmations that I felt like I could actually I could do this um so that was that was huge for me and then mm. I continued to submit to Ruslan's show and then he started to you know remember my name and we kind of built a relationship through that and uh yeah no, I mean he's been super helpful and uh just kind of been more and more involved as as questions come up I can always reach out to him and he's super helpful Very dope. I always feel like I feel like it's almost necessary to have some sort of mentor before I even got into CHH. Um, 
Doc Easley was a professor of mine that even got me into rap. And he was kind of guiding me. He, he taught me about ASCAP before I even knew why I would need it. And so I'm like, you foresight, because he was trying to explain it to me. I knew nothing, right? I hadn't released anything really. Um, but he was like, you need to go ahead and pay like $50 for this. You need it for this, that, and the other. And I'm like, at this point, I'm like college poor. So I asked my mom, I'm like, can I have $50? Because my, and she was trying to get me to explain it. I was like, I don't know. I just know it's important. And then years later, I'm like, thank you for making me get this. Like now I already have it. I already had started putting my songs in there. Um, so I feel like everyone kind of needs some sort of mentor, someone they can ask questions to, because it's really easy to get, especially in CHH, kind of lost. Um, I, I'm never going to let you forget this, but I remember when we first started speaking, we had a song we were going to do. I was... I had, I was only a, maybe a year or a year and a half into CHH, but I already had like stories and kind of things to stay away from and, and tips. So I remember being like, yo man, like you have, you can't say this and you shouldn't do this. I think I was telling you to run. I was like, you should run from CHH, honestly. Like you should go far away. You will be happier somewhere else <laughs> because I knew what yeah. your aspirations were. And I was like, I don't want you to get, you know, hurt like a lot of other artists have. Yeah, I've had I've had multiple people tell me uh, <laughs> this go go be great somewhere else. But... You didn't listen. But here I am. You're still around. No, I feel it. I feel like there's room for an Alcott. Um, this is why I typically write stuff down because I knew there was something specific I needed to ask you. Let's see. We got KJ. We got our songs together. We got. Let's see. How do you feel? I might just throw a random question at the wall. Let me think for a second. Oh yeah, I can't forget the fact that you, the whole reason you are on the show, no, it's not the whole reason, but so you, would you say that you've, and I was talking to someone about this, would you say that you've already released a project or are you just not counting that, what you had before as a project at all, as like your debut? Uh, yeah, I'm not counting that. Even though it was a project that you did release? <laughs> Well, so it was, uh, it like when I first, like even the version that's released is not even the whole thing. Like it, really? it originally, I think was like a 10 song thing, maybe mm -hmm. that was like sort of an attempt at an album. I did it in college. Um, mm -hmm. but by the time I actually like started getting any sort of like traction, like after the Lecrae thing, after the futuristic thing, I still just it's had it sitting on my, on my hard drive, like all these songs that you know like were done but i hadn't i hadn't released them and i went back and listened to them i was like i'm so much better than this now um yep. and so i didn't even want to release it but so i end up cutting like some of the songs um and then i just released uh, maybe like five of them i can't remember mm -hmm. um but just because other people were like oh no these are good enough like even then i i didn't want to release them so yeah no i feel that um I like I've sort of I wouldn't say I've disowned that project because <laughs> I know that other people enjoy some of those songs yeah. but um I I never I never really planned on releasing it no that so. makes sense I feel it's almost it's not the exact same but it reminds me of kind of like how after Good Kid Mad City was so successful and doing so great and Grammy nominated Kendrick almost seemed and his label definitely seemed to kind of be like Oh yeah, Section 80 is wasn't the debut. Good Kid Mad City was the debut. <laughs> it was like, but you yeah. said that that was an album. No, it's not an it's not an album. It's kind of just a, a throwaway. But you said that that was a, and it's really good. No, 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 no. Good Kid Mad City is the best debut album ever. So <laughs> you are dropping your actual. I'm guessing you was you're considering it your debut album, correct? Yeah. So you're dropping that soon, and it's called. Let me make sure I don't mess. Is is what's a man to do, right? Yep. So that I don't even, have you even dropped the the name of it yet, or have you? Uh, I may have tweeted it at one point. I think you did tweet not, it. I don't, yeah, but yeah, but I don't. Me, I don't think I like made like official announcement. Got you. So I got the official early listen. I was one of. Uh, I got the golden ticket in a chocolate bar. You said I could listen to the mm -hmm. <laughs> to the album. Yeah, that's exactly um, right. <laughs> excellent album. I. I didn't name it, but in a video of mine, I said that Lecrae's album and I didn't name the other two, but Lecrae's album has like a little bit of competition and one of them is something that's not out yet. And that was your album. 
Um, Let's go. I've, you said that you, <laughs> it's funny because we're going to circle back to that. But you, um, do you feel confident in these songs? I know you've told me in the group chat that you kind of hate them now because you've listened to them so much. And I can relate to that. Do you, aside from the fatigue of having to listen to it a bunch, are you like proud of this to call this your debut? Uh, I think it's sort of impossible for me to separate <laughs> those two at this point. Um, because really? I... It's a it's sort of a thing where like I want nothing to do with it. No, but, no, I get um, it. <laughs> but I mean, it, like, I, everybody who's heard it really likes it, um, mm -hmm. and so I think to some extent I just have to trust that, um, which is which is fine. But I, the lesson that I've learned is that I need to like just speed up my process so I can like not absolutely hate stuff when I release it. Yeah, because that's did not you fun. Start? When did you start uh, making the project? Well, the probably the oldest songs on there are like existed in some form when I was still in college. So maybe gosh, maybe three years old is probably like what? the oldest ones on there. <laughs> that's um, no wonder you hate them now. <laughs> yeah. And I mean obviously those songs have like evolved like to some extent since then but right. um but yeah i mean i guess like the the actual creative process probably started about three years ago but the majority wow. of the work happened over the past year hmm. i feel like i would lose my mind so like doing the rap should be fun and stuff and even before then when i the first project i did it probably took the longest because it was the first but then after that i'm one of those people that once i find out i like something I just got like I didn't have a break from dropping a project until really recently. It would be like every year I would get a project done and release it. I'd almost would start the next project before I finished the first project because I just became addicted to the process. Um, so it usually about a year is how long it takes me to like put together an entire thing. Um, so yeah, three years and I'm tired of the songs after a year. So I can't imagine. Um, I'm trying to think of what songs might have been. So I'll say my favorite song as of right now. Is pro can I say the name of it? Sure, yeah. Uh, Rap or Die. Because yep. uh, there's a lot of reasons, but one, the feature is dope. But two, like it, it kind of puts my stereotype of you uh, out there of like you are ang you're an angry rapper who says a lot of a lot of words and can rap fast. Like I feel like your verse on there, I played it for uh, for Alex the other day, and I was like, I think I started with that. I was like, he sounds really angry, and this is. <laughs> <laughs> like your your verse starts off like you're just going um so that's probably my favorite do you have a song well i guess you say you hate them all but do you have one that when you first listened to it you were like this is the one like that i'm most proud of this song um yeah i mean i think that i probably really liked all of them for different reasons like at at different points that uh, rapper dies is also one of my favorites uh, mm -hmm. um that uh that actually the first verse at least my first verse on that song that might be the oldest verse on the whole really? project that is may, crazy may, it's it's it, or like you know top three oldest verses like that verse was from like a contest entry from a long time ago Wow. that I then like repurposed uh, like Jesse like made a new beat for it and then like maybe I like changed like some of the lyrics a little bit but it's like mm -hmm. essentially the same verse from you know, you know how many years ago now that I'm thinking about it um, because I feel like something you've evolved with and you could correct me if I'm wrong but like you used to do how do I explain this I can understand how that verse is older because I feel like younger you had more words does that make sense? Like more words that run, but let maybe less, not less message, but like, I feel like some of your newer stuff is less focused on a lot of words that run. Does that make sense at all? I don't know if that yeah. makes well, sense. Well, no, I, I, I think, I think I, I agree. I think that part of that was the headspace that I was in was like, I was the contest guy. Like I yeah, was yeah, doing yeah, yeah. the contest sort of circuit. And so it was mostly like all these like sort of showcase verses. It wasn't like about, you know, making like song songs. But so that's, I think that's why like that, that verse is the way it is. And then like, 
I think it ties into like it became like more of a song, especially within context of the album, at least in my opinion. But mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I definitely think that my verses used to be, or I mean, some of them still are, but that I used <laughs> to do a lot more of just like the super technical, like like let me see how many syllables I can rhyme, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, like, yeah. all of that stuff, like just because it was you know I was trying to compete. It's definitely whereas impressive. now it's like yeah. It's kind of like I'm mostly a, just like, no, you go, you go. Oh, I was, it's kind of like a, <laughs> this is a bad analogy, but it's kind of like a party trick where it's like, yo, do the thing that you know is going to impress the most, right? So like for me, all of my content, and I try my best not to do this in my music as much, although doing the fun mixtapes gives me the space to kind of have less subject matter. But for my contest is how many punchlines can I fit into this verse? Like, because it's a contest. Right. So I want you to get as many bars as possible. There's no need for me to tell a story. I'm not going to do anything other than what I'm really good at. And all the contests I've ever won, except for the KJ one, because even back then I didn't have a lot of punchlines, is like, there's 16 bars, there's going to be 16 punchlines in this verse. <laughs> Whereas if I'm making a song that's like a story and has a subject, it's not going to make sense for me to have a bunch of punchlines. And I'm like, what, did he, what is he talking about? What is this song about? Like, and something I think you do a great job of on this project and helps me to see some of your influences is the hooks are really good. Like they're not, you do a good job of doing singing hooks. The hook for Rap or Die is really good. Like the effects on it and everything. Um, so I think it shows that you, a lot of the artists that you listen to aren't just, I don't want to diss Eminem, but like, I think we know that Eminem his strength is his verses. He might kind of slack out on the on the on the hook. I feel like you made a like a conscious effort to be like, I'm gonna make really good hooks and good songs along with good rapping. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean that that was uh, that that was at least part of the idea. I I don't. Um, again, I hate these songs now. So like it's <laughs> it's I I'm super nitpicky about it. But that was one of the things uh, like when I was uh, sending stuff to Ruslan frequently, like early on, that was one of the things he said to me was like, yo, your verses are like incredible. Like once you like get the hook thing figured out, like it, you're, you're out of here. And so right. that, and at the time I like, I was hardly even doing hooks at all. Like I, I just like, wasn't even attempting it. Um, yeah. But when he said that to me, I like spent a lot of time like trying to figure out, okay, like, well, how can I, how can I do hooks in a way that like, isn't me like trying to do hooks. It's like just mm -hmm. me like, you know, doing what I do. Um, and so I think that I've improved at that a lot over the years. I, I definitely have written some hooks that I really like that I'm, I'm proud of. A um, couple of them are on the album. Some of them are other songs that haven't been released. Um, but I'm definitely still like still working at that. Um, Cause it's definitely tough. It, I mean, yeah. And well, and I mean, the truth is I, I listen to like, I mean, I listen to a lot of artists who don't really do hooks. Like if I'm in the car by myself, like I, there are a lot of artists who I'll throw on who like, they just kind of just rap. Yeah, and that's yeah. cool to me, but like to the average listener, they don't care anything about that. Yeah, they're like, where's the catchy part of this song? I don't understand. Right. It's just rapping. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's why I like the Chop It Up songs, because the, the hook is already written. It is just yeah. saying Chop, chop it, up it Up in a different way. Chop like, It Up. Like, different <laughs> yeah. creative ways to say Chop It Up. Um, so here is, and I'm you reminded me, because this was the thing I wanted to ask and I almost forgot. So your, and I think this is correct, your favorite rapper just favorite rapper is Lecrae. Is that correct? Yeah. He was, was he like, he was your first favorite rapper. Like he was like the guy you would consider your first or no. Uh, I mean, sorta. I mean, I, I think that he was my first favorite rapper when I like really was like into hip hop, but mm -hmm. like, obviously like he wasn't my intro introduction to hip hop. Um, yeah. and I think that, I think the, first rapper I remember being like oh I really like his music and like I like check for it was T.I. Um, really interesting but but that was like obviously because he was on the radio like when I was a kid mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. growing up so like I would hear him like not just on his own songs but he would have like you know a feature verse with like Justin Timberlake or whatever like yep. so like I think he was the first rapper that was like constantly like in my ear and I really liked and so like 
he probably is my first favorite rapper, but I hadn't like really like dove into like hip hop yet when I was like right a there. nerd about it. Yeah, that's funny because same thing. I was just explaining this to Alex. My everyone knows my favorite rapper is Kendrick, and that was. I guess you could say by the time I really, really got into hip hop, it became Kendrick. It was it was like kind of a balance between chance. So my order goes Lil Wayne, and that was before I was a hip hop head, right? That was when, kind of like T.I., Wayne was on every, you could not avoid him. There's not a person on this planet who was my age in middle school and high school who was like, who is Lil Wayne? Like, he's on rock songs, rap songs, he plays the guitar, he's on everything. It's almost annoying how much he's on. I had Pandora stations back when I used Pandora and you like you know there'd be ads eventually i would just make an uh, uh uh station for everything carter one carter two carter three lil wayne lil wheezy wheezy f baby like i i'll switch to that if there's an ad so i loved wayne but i wasn't that much in the rap then discovered like chance the rapper late high school and he, funny enough he's the way i got way more into hip-hop because acid rap was my favorite i started listening to the feet the music of the features so I was like, oh, Vic Mensa, let me listen to him. Absol, I don't really know him. Let's listen to, um, I just forgot his first album. What's it called? What's it called? What's it called? Control uh, System. Control System. Let me listen to that. And let me listen to features on that. And then find Kendrick. And then after maybe two or three years, Kendrick became my favorite in college. And the rest is history. But yeah, I feel like, so Cray is your favorite rapper. And you, so you've had uh, an interaction with Cray that most artists have not had, where he heard you rap and recorded himself watching you rap and liked it. What were your thoughts? When did that happen? Remind me when that happened and how did you feel when that happened? Um, uh, when did that happen? That was, maybe that was like two years ago. Uh, I think right. it was probably a little more than two years ago because I think it was the summer of 2020. Wow. Uh, Man, Cause fine. it yeah, it was definitely, it was like peak COVID I feel like. Wow. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I mean that that was uh, that was nuts because I just uh, I think I had just lost like a different contest that yeah, I felt yeah, like yeah, I yeah, should yeah. have won. Yeah. Uh, like right, but like right when he announced his contest, and I'm pretty sure when he announced it, it was like you had like two days to do a verse. Mm -hmm. right. um, and so I was like coming off of, like just losing this contest, and I was like, I don't feel like rapping, like I'm mm -hmm. I'm not doing this or whatever. <laughs> uh, but then it got to be like hours before the deadline. And I was like, wow, well, I'm an idiot if I don't do this. Like, <laughs> this is my chance for like literally like my favorite rapper to like hear me rap. Exactly. So I was like, all right, well, let me just throw something together. I mean, I, th I think that I probably did that verse in 30 minutes or something. Wow. Like, That's crazy. Shot, shot like a video of myself like doing it in front of my, like on photo booth or something. Right. Uh, <laughs> and sent it in. And I, of course, like didn't expect to hear anything because who knows how many people entered that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Facts. Um, and uh, then just like three days later, I feel like I was just sitting on my on the porch at my parents' house, uh, and I get a text from a random number and it just says like, "Hey, this is Lecrae. Like, I saw your oh, wow. video. Like, it was it was crazy. Like, can you hop on like a call?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure." Uh, and I remember like running to like find my computer and like pull up Zoom and everything. Um, and then I mean, we had like a very like brief uh conversation uh some of which like is on his youtube or whatever mm -hmm. but uh yeah i mean that was like that was sort of the ultimate like confirmation that like i can rap like that's like right, that's like yeah. the only confirmation i'll ever need now it's yeah, like yeah, the that. guy who basically made me want to rap said that i i can rap and so it's like yeah no i mean i'll, I'll i will forever remember that very fact no and most people don't get that opportunity because, hey, if Wayne Chance or Kendrick ever heard me rap and even didn't say anything bad, I'd be like, this is <laughs> this is amazing. I should do this forever. Um, so I know you won't say this, but that's why I'm here. Um, so I know you remember, but do you remember what he said d at, during that, whenever he was watching your, your verse? Do you remember what he said at the end of that? Like when we had the conversation or what he mm -hmm. said in, well, the, do you, in the reaction? In the video, in the reaction. Or maybe it wasn't, uh, right. maybe he just said it. I thought it was at the end of the reaction video, but let me see what your answer is first. <laughs> well, I'm assuming you're talking about when we 
when he and I like actually talked on okay on FaceTime or on Zoom or whatever, and uh, he had said something about potentially like getting me to like send some stuff to to reach and like potentially working on something. Is that like what? Yeah. You're For some reason, about? I thought that was at the end of the of the reaction video, but I no. Probably it, wrong. Well, it may have been it may have been in the video that he posted to YouTube, but it was like okay. it was like when we were talking. I, I can't remember. You're right. Um, you're right. That you're right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I mean, no. I mean, nothing ever ended up happening with that. But I just I assumed that it you know they just sort of forgot, which it, you know it's it's fine. I mean, Did I, you ever send? I, I don't. I have no beef over that. Did you ever send anything? No, like they never. I, I'm pretty sure they said that they would reach out to me, and I never like heard anything. I think I I could be misremembering though, but. It just it, it, you know either way nothing nothing came out of it which it you know is fine right i <laughs> i love that i'm mr controversy so i'm gonna daryl i want you to clip this part where's my camera is it right here it's right here i'm gonna say this is what i'm gonna say lecrae i think you should reach out to alcott i think y'all should work on something i think you should at the very least listen to his new album because it's super fire and you saw something to him back then he's better now so I think y'all should work on some. I think you should keep your promise, sir. <laughs> <laughs> we can edit that out if you want, but I'm gonna have I'm gonna have bookkeeper clip that just because. Here's what I say, and I'm 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 just joking. But I do I remember that you were excited. Um, I remember he's your favorite rapper, and I remember being like, oh my good, like he's gonna get some type of opportunity. And I feel like what happens is, um, it's never intentional. But people who are who are bigger than us, even someone on like my level, might tell somebody who's on a lower level something like, "We'll work, or I'll hit you back, or we'll do this, or we should do that." Um, and then life gets busy and things happen, and then it never comes back up. So to the person that said it, you forget, and it's not that big a deal. But to the person who had it said to them, it's like, "This is going to be on my mind for like a long time because it's a big deal to me." Um, so just like a little reminder every once in a while, I think could be helpful. Um, so this is your reminder, Cray, and we'll we'll move on because I know Alcott's mad at me right now. <laughs> I just know that you would never say anything. So I, I, I'm not afraid to say anything. So shout out to Cray. We love Cray over here. CC4 is super dope. Alcott's album might be better than it. We'll see. Um, <laughs> in on a, <laughs> I don't know, man. It's pretty good. Um, <laughs> let's see. I'll, I'll probably end on something happier. Let's see. So you were both, well, I'll just mention this. We're both in a Madden league. I, I won the first Super Bowl. Just wanted to let that be known. Oh, you, you meant happy anything. for you. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. You're better this season. It's okay. Um, I think. I, I don't know. It might be worse. <laughs> I think it's about the same. It's okay. I'm, a, I'm addicted to the game, so um let's see so album coming soon when do you think album's coming if you had to guess um hopefully next month it'll well released in some sort of form next month um but but yeah i it's it's up in the air though gotcha merry christmas a christmas album fourth quarter album let's see if you make the end of year lists um let's see so we touched on tls Cray, uh, CHH. Oh, here's the well, I don't know if this is even happy, but this will be the last thing, or maybe the next to last thing. So, on your album, right, you have features, and you have this. This is so funny. You're probably I, like, I are do you have to features set me on my up? album. So, you have um, some of your features will say are not CHH. Do you feel like, yeah. Was that something that you intentionally did? Was that something that you were afraid of, knowing that maybe some of the content in their verses might uh, might not necessarily align with every value you have? If that makes sense. Did, did that scare you at all? Did that do you think that's something that maybe listeners might be upset about, or are you kind of like these are rappers that I enjoy and it doesn't bother me? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that maybe there will be some listeners who don't like some stuff, but that, mm. I try not to think about that when I'm creating. I mean, I like one of the reasons why Rapper Dies is one of my favorite songs, aside from what we already said, is that 
Jaron Benton is a rapper that I've been listening to since I was literally in middle school. And really? So like, wow. Yeah. So like to get him on a song, like, it's like one of my favorite rappers. Like I, I'm not thinking about like, oh, is this going to like hurt somebody's feelings? Like I'm, I'm just like, th this is somebody who I think is dope, who fits the song. Like, let me, let me get him on here. Um, right. And I like, obviously I'm not like, I'm not making songs that I think facilitate another artist like saying something wild yeah, yeah. Uh, so like <laughs> yeah. i'm generally not worried about getting a verse back that's like oh my gosh like i can't release this it's like yeah not feel um, like a two chain if i art. have to censor a couple <laughs> words like you know whatever uh yeah but yeah I, I i don't i don't think about the whole like oh like i need to like have this many chh artists or like not like i just i'm no thanks not feeling like that, that yeah <laughs> I feel it. I work um, with CHH artists. I work with other like artists who are not CHH. I work with who I think is good. No, no, I, I, I respect that. I feel like that's kind of how we should move because, and it's, it comes off rude, but it's like, if let's say you put out this project and somebody doesn't like Rap or Die because of the feature, you don't have to listen to Rap or Die. You could cut out after your verse and skip to the next song. Like, it's not like you're not forcing people to listen to this music and be like, listen to this verse. Like, um, and again, it's not anything insane. Like, I think both of us would agree if you got a verse back from anybody and it was like devil worship, you know what I'm saying? You'd be like, I can't use this. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I'm sorry, yeah. Kendrick, but I can't even sense it. Like, it's not going to work. So, uh, what's his name? Uh, <laughs> at Kirk Toll maybe have him on the album <laughs> yeah yeah but so it, i you know i don't think it'd be anything crazy but ultimately i feel like we're creators the art is kind of for us first that's what i believe so you know if you're okay with it i don't feel like anybody else should have a problem with it and in case i'm scaring anybody there really isn't anything crazy on the album though. like i don't think there's any song that would be like yo he is is he chh anymore like what well is he, <laughs> should he be, <laughs> Christians listen to his music anymore? Um, maybe I'll try to find a happy ending because I keep, I keep giving you controversial stuff. Here's another bit of controversy. I was gonna fake yell at you because even though you said you didn't have a CHH quota, you did have some CHH uh, artists on your album and I was not one of them. And I'm like, I started to think i was like i'm not i'm not on any of his songs now that i think he hasn't put me on a single and i'm sitting here in my head like he's on chop it up two three i want to quit um there's something else oh babble that might be all of them and then we're on runaway together so i guess technically that counts kind of sort of that's an out song something. um but i'm like you know what i'm gonna give him crap for having Oh, I can't say. Can I say any, uh, an artist that you have on there? Yeah, you can say whatever. You have, and granted, it's a remix, but you have Q-Flow on there. And I'm like, I know I've known him longer than Q-Flow. I, I was going to fight Q. He's going to love this part. I was like, you, you, you put Q. And then you had Ruslan, I think, as well. I'm just naming all your artists. And Coop, which yep. I think you, you and Coop definitely have good chemistry together. But I was like, you know what? I'm gonna campaign to be on the next Alcott song. Well, now, now um, I'm curious though, which, if, if you were on one of the songs on the album, which one should it have ooh, been? That is a good question. Well, I'm about to pull it up as if I have it ready. Um, you know what? I think I would have done well on the, um, I might actually take the time to pull it up. Let me, give me one second. Cause that's, that is the thing. Like when I mentioned how, um, our sounds are different. Like the, our sounds were a little closer when I was, when I had you on, I want to quit. But even then, like our verses sounded different. What's a man to do? Nope, the link is gone. So actually wait, nope, it's back. <laughs> I don't know why that, those links are weird. I've had no. other people have trouble with them too. I'm gonna just play the whole, I really, I think, I could have fit on the remix only because remixes kind of lend themselves to you just have people on there and they do what they do like it doesn't necessarily sure have yeah to. um oh, i thought it was dope that you got gq on here too <laughs> so I yeah that's probably GQ, probably walk away or the or the remix um but then again it might have been like trying to shoehorn me in there so it's fine 
it's fine. Um, it's fine. I'll just have you on 12 <laughs> songs and you never put me on one. Um, okay, something positive for Alcott. Let's see. Any relationship? No, it's fine. Um <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I know there's something. There's gotta be something. It's a project coming soon. Um our song Runaway is is very different from both of our typical sound because we're both singing well you sing at the end but it's uh <laughs> it's kind of a slower song but i someone i showed the song to earlier i played your verse and they were like he still sounds mad <laughs> i dude i don't understand why y'all say that <laughs> well you know what it is i feel like you don't have verses where you sound particularly happy so people will just assume like he either sounds neutral or angry. But like for me, I almost intentionally met like I don't really rap like this, like my talking voice. I kind of make it like higher. So it makes yeah. you like you can hear almost hear me smiling as I'm rapping. I can't I, I imagine you doing that at all. I can't imagine well, you uh, rapping okay, happy hold, at hold all. Up, hold on. All right. Well, for, first of all, go to my Instagram uh -oh. and uh, and my fur watch my first pinned one and see if you think i sound angry and if you think i sound angry on that i'm gonna text you another one to where like i literally think i was like purposely smiling while rapping uh the, the pinned on the far left or far right what uh far left the brown hoodie let's see we need new definitions for all the words like curvaceous Cause girl, the way that dress be fitting just absurd and pervasive And look how perfect your face is Now I feel spurred and persuaded to get you burking purses But first, spit a verse with a cadence to match your heartbeat, pardon me You the star of every show, but can I get a part, please? Hey, when the day and turn to simply just communing through computer keys I take you out this afternoon for some charcuterie boards Be no no more, you gon' never be bored I'ma treat you like I've never treated no one before Yeah, I'ma forget about all of my past women I don't really care what I have with them, can't ask for more, I'm actually short, not back and forth like badminton, no games, girl. I'm in the whip bumping chronicles by Corday. Feeling phenomenal. What about the Corday? Skip the beat when I saw you in the doorway. I thank the Lord. Hey. Okay. 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 So, it's not that you sound angry. It's that it's kind of like neutral. Like the words are definitely happier. I almost feel oh, like yeah, if, you yeah. if you went up just like a slight octave in your voice and i don't know i don't i think you probably can do it but you probably would sound weird rapping that way um this is definitely closer uh yeah well no I, i'm not saying that it's like happy right i'm just like i wouldn't say that i sound that's angry, angry. That. okay that's that's yeah. probably fair you don't sound angry on that what is high school? but the one i just texted you i i don't like i feel like i don't sound angry right. or aggressive at all but we have an exclusive what's it called high school shout out to high school you probably heard this actually yeah, this is like i probably have old. This is gonna be sad. No. So beautiful, no way you talking to me. Can't even imagine how See, it's the higher octave. You must understand that you're the first goddess I've seen, like something a part of a dream that I don't remember I had, but it's always been there. You know that I need heaven I'm with fell in the love and I landed in bliss. Now we don't need nothing, no fancy production. Just us, we don't even need cameras or pictures. The memories be so vivid when we both in them. I don't know if it's coincidence being a This sample is dope. You know what it is? So um, I think I'm, my theory is right. It's that octave because mm -hmm. I feel like yeah. if I rap with my complete normal speaking voice, I probably wouldn't sound super. I mean, I wouldn't sound angry, but I definitely wouldn't sound as happy as like, yeah. here's a perfect example. My verse, I'm trying to, I try to picture you because it's funny. And uh, one of the chats I'm in, uh, like that's an offshoot of TLS. We were talking about um, doing rap impressions of people. And I was talking about how I, I used to mess with you and do like your look, look. <laughs> yeah. But I was saying Amanda can do a good uh, Mitch impression and she, I got her to do one. But like mine is like super, like a perfect example is my verse on like Michael. I'm like, I've been running around my city. Like I literally am smiling. I'm trying to imagine yeah, you yeah. doing that and I can't even picture it. I don't think it's possible. <laughs> I wouldn't want you to- I'll, I'll practice anyway. it. I'll do practice it. If you it. Can, I'll Hey, I think I said this before. We should do a song where you're Im impersonating me, and I'm impersonating. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's the that. what's the the one that you have with KJ where it's 
something in my day once. No, 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 I've been no, rocking. No, no. I've been. <laughs> I've been. I've been rocking with God, and he be my day one. That you know what's funny about that song? I don't. I don't like that song. It was right around the time that I was still trying to. It was like the start of me becoming who I am now. But I was intentionally making a song to have KJ on it, and Poetics produced it. And I wasn't. The hook isn't great at all. Yet it's, it's catchy. Though. Of, I mean, I remember it. It definitely is, and it definitely it's one of my better performing songs, mainly because KJ's on it. Um, I remember first day it did like twenty five hundred, and I was like, did I get hacked? Like I, I to this day I don't think I've done that much in a day other than like chop it up two, I think. Um, but yeah, yeah, you should learn that song. <laughs> you should try to rap along. Yeah, yeah. Remember that song. Um, this this definitely went over the time I was expecting, but I kind of figured it would. So this is. I might have you on here a bunch, man. I guess we have said we should do a show together, or like a podcast. You yeah, like do... Th- that's where it gets really controversial. Yeah, see, that's, you know, if you want to see a, a paywalled show where we're honest, <laughs> go to, what is it called? What is it? Is it AMP? Whatever platform where the people do podcasts, <laughs> we're going to have a podcast soon. Um, tell the people where they can find your music and talk to you and hit you up for features and all that. Uh, yeah, I mean, don't talk to me, but uh, <laughs> it, no, I'm kidding. Uh, it's uh, at Alcott Music, A-L-C-O-T-T Music on Instagram, Twitter. I think that's my TikTok too. Uh, oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, Alcott on Spotify, Apple, everything. Hey, what's a man to do coming soon? Super excited. Album of the year. Uh, shout out to <laughs> yes, Bookkeeper sir. for letting me do the show. Thanks for being patient with me because I I've been all over the place. So I need to do more of these. I, funny enough, I actually think this might be the last one until 2023, but that's only was that like six weeks. So until next time, have a great uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Appreciate y'all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Not gonna lie, so when I was younger, I would say like, you know how we have to all go through this identity crisis type thing when we're younger? That's good. Like, yeah, kind of. Like, you you don't want to be like... Be- friends, any friends. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so do, in- do wonders like AI anomalies. Her- I know that, right? Saga, who was on, on, on the same beats. You're definitely more lyrical, so like you're not. I actually knew a guy in Miami that he was going to the same church. And I tweeted like last week that someday I'm gonna have a song with him. I don't know how it's gonna happen, but it's gonna happen. Um, so. <laughs>